Hi guys, Steve here, and I've got some great news about ARK. Only kidding, there isn't any. A few things have happened, so I wanted some time to think about it. For those who don't know yet, ARK 2 has been delayed till 2025. What a surprise. But that's great news for everyone who says, I'm glad they're taking their time, so the game can be the best it can be without any bugs. This just in, no it won't be, and it'll be full of bugs. That date will be for the bare minimum just to get it playable, if it's even ready for that time. There's no news on the price of Ark Survival Ascended lowering. The devs don't work for free, you know. It's not like Snail Games could have invested back some of the estimated well over half a billion dollars in revenue back to create the upgrade version or anything, as other companies do. Every dime of that must have just vanished. That's why we're forced to charge you all over again. And none of that money will be used to create a completely different, unrelated game either. Honest. Which we'll come to at the end. Oh look, Satisfactory's been upgraded to Unreal Engine 5 for free. I wonder how they managed to do that. Like saving back some of the profits to invest in doing the upgrade. Great game by the way, definitely check it out, it's awesome. As for Arca Standard, we've had some images over the last few months. We've had the new look to the drop pods. A lot of them come down in bad places like buried underground or in rocks. So with the extra legs, if I hit a rock, are they going to be stuck up in the air and hard to get at? We've had the new tree. It's a tree. Next. Then we had the new updated assets. With the smithy, campfire, sleeping bag, etc. It was here that I realised something. If I could have upgraded all these assets before and made the game better, then why didn't they? As they'd look the same in Unreal 4 as they're doing 5. I know it's to look like they've shown to put some work into it, as we're paying for the game again, but it's the kind of thing you should have done when the game changed from early access to full release, as the only difference and the only thing that changed was the price doubled. With only a few months to go before ASA is said to release, it's still worrying that there's not been a gameplay trailer to try and hype us up. That usually means there's nothing that's finished, and it's nowhere near ready to being complete. So tell me in the comments how long do you think it's going to be delayed for. I just hope it's good and it'll fix some of the problems from the old build. Ever since the roadmap and Arc Ascend had been announced, the Once whole community is now split into three. Those that will get Arc Ascend, and the ones thinking about it if it's any good, or when it's on sale. The ones that won't buy it, and that stick into Arc Survival Evolved, then the last group are just sick of all the shit and just quit ARK altogether. At the time of making this, I did a poll and only 54% of people said there were or were going to think about buying ARK Ascended. The other 46% are going to stick with ARK 1 or quit ARK altogether. And that's if ARK Ascended is any good. If it's not, it runs terribly. If your computer can't handle it in Unreal Engine 5. If it's buggy as hell, or if it's full of microtransactions, the people switching over to Arc Ascended will be less than 50%. So with Arc Survival Evolve still running on private servers, we might be in for an Arc War of the two different versions fighting against each other. That would probably be the worst case scenario for Wildcard and Snail games. As what if like Battlefield 2042, that people buy the new, better looking version, find out it's terrible with lots of things different they don't like, and then most of the community moves back to the older version. What's Wildcard gonna do if that happens? Stop the plans to scrap Survival Evolved? Split the dev team to keep both versions running? But more likely take more devs off Arc 2, and get them to change Arc Ascended back to more like Arc Survival Evolved. We've got no idea what Ark Survival Ascended will be like yet. The future is mostly unknown, so try and think of every possibility that could happen. I'm sure Snail Games were shocked when Atlas completely failed. I would normally say that that couldn't possibly happen with just upgrading a game, but then again it's Wildcard we're dealing with. Now on to the biggest Ark drama at the moment. 90 of the Island Boy tribe members have been banned from Ark for what it appears for no reason apart from attacking a Snail Games associated tribe, allegedly, in PvP, T-Tribe. I'm just relaying some of the information from Hod's video that I'll link in the description below, so go watch that after for the full details, but I'll give a quick version. First a little backstory. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. The ARK creators, or Wildcard founders, created ARK when they left another studio, but they were under contract not to create another game. So the previous company sued them for millions. So Snail Games came along and Wildcard jumped in bed with them to bail them out. 
Snail Games became Ark and Wildcard's publisher and owns all rights to Ark. So basically Snail Games has Wildcard by the balls. It is alleged that Snail Games is associated with a Chinese PvP tribe called T-Tribe. It's said that some of the Snail Games lot play in that tribe. And T-Tribe has admin server access to the servers they are on. The official servers are on. Allegedly. As you can imagine, that had corrupt the entire official PvP system. Rumours about this have been going around for a while. So the Island Boys thought they'd get proof of it. And because some of them are ARC PvP content creators for YouTube, they videoed their experience to get proof. The Island Boys wanted some good PvP, so they attacked a small T-Tribe base. None of them were cheating or using aimbots, and the server got a video to prove it. The Island Boys attacked, and when the T-Tribe's dinos and players started getting killed, the server shut down and magically restarted. When it started back up again, the server was rolled back to where everything was alive. The Island Boys got in and started killing them again, and the server shut down and rolled back again. Then again, then again, then again, over 10 times. Then some of the Island Boy players started getting banned. T-Tribe falsely accused him of aimbotting when they were not and had video proof he wasn't. Just to point out that getting banned that fast while still raiding is very suspect in itself. How long would it normally take to file a report, get that report processed, then a GM come to the server to start banning people? The Island Boys tested the server and drew back, not attacking, and the server worked perfectly fine and never shut down. They waited, the server was perfectly fine, then went into attack and the server went down again. It was pissing the Island Boys off with some of them getting banned and the server rolling back, so they decided to try and wipe T-Tribe. They created a fob, started wiping them, then just as they were about to wipe the base, over 90 of the Island Boys got banned. A global ban. I've seen the footage and I believe what they say. The Island Boys asked why they were banned and got a vague comment about hacking when they know they weren't. They appealed the bans but weren't listened to because Snail Games handles the appeals. And because Snail Game members are in T-Tribe, allegedly, Snail Game are policing themselves. It's been over a week since Hod did his video on this and there's been no denial from Wildcard or Snail Games. And with the video proof of the servers keep shutting down every time T-Tribe's being attacked, and with the servers rolling back, they can't really deny it. Some of those island boys were ARC PvP content creators, so they've been banned now from going into official PvP servers. That's going to affect their YouTube channel, and that's one of the main things that pisses other YouTubers off to support them. So what does this mean for official PvP? Well, as we know, Ark Survival Evolved PvP was in a terrible state, with all the cheating and hackers. It's been like that for years and has never been fixed. Well, no wonder if a publisher of Ark is a cheater and hacker themselves. Allegedly. We all hoped that Ark Survival Ascended coming out and being redone in Unreal Engine 5 would fix some of the exploits and hacking going on. But if Snail Games are giving server admin access to their tribe members on official servers, allegedly, the entire system is corrupt and it's a complete disgrace. So it doesn't matter what Wildcard tries to do to stop cheating, as Snail Games is ARC's publisher and has Wildcard by the balls. They can demand their own servers with admin commands, spawn in what they want, when they want, restart and roll back the servers, and it makes the entire PvP system corrupt and not worth playing. If Snail Games' ARC's publisher is actively involved in cheating, allegedly, then no wonder PvP has never been fixed. This destroys the trust in Snail Games' products. Now, they might not see it as much of a problem with ARC, but when Snail Games is creating a new blockchain game called Project Hermes, where investors and players probably have to invest money to play, how can anyone trust that game? Shout out to Jade Plays Games for finding that one out. If Snail Games cheats and gives server access to a tribe on a game that doesn't have investors and players investing money into it like Ark, allegedly, do you think Snail Games can be trusted not to be tempted to cheat and give access out on a blockchain game where people would be investing lots of money? 
Would you constantly spend money on a game when you know that Snail Games gives server access out and their people can cheat as much as they want against you, allegedly, or ban you completely from a game just for attacking them, like we did with the Island Boys, allegedly, no. So it probably wasn't the best move to do that as when people start making videos of Project Hermes and showing snail games in-game corruption, no one's going to trust them and that game will probably tank. And with the announcement of this new game from snail games, it brings up more questions. Is the money you're paying to buy Arca Standard going towards making Project Hermes? What's snail games' priority now? Arc 2 was their main focus, but Wildcard didn't seem too confident in it, or that it would like it because it would be so different from Survival Evolved. Now the main priority is Survival Ascended, as they're charging as a game for that and that's going to bring in extra money, but with Project Hermes being announced, if that's likely to bring in more money than Arc 2, is Snail Games going to put all their efforts into making Project Hermes, and put back and delay Arc 2 even more? I've got a feeling they'll do whatever brings in the most amount of money, don't you? And if I can make more money by giving their admin access out to their associated tribes, it's highly likely they will be tempted to do so. Because if they're cheating in ARC, it's likely they'll be cheating in Project Hermes as well. Ross Clark came up with a good idea. I was impressed, usually he's a bit of a fanboy. <laughs> But even he was disgusted with the amount of corruption Snail Games is doing with T-Tribe. Allegedly. And he has to join any tribe that were going to raid them. So he could see what happens. So let's step that up a bit. But if any tribes are going to attack and raid T-Tribe, contact the biggest ARC YouTubers and ask them to join you in the raid and record it. Let's call it ARC Watch. Then, if T-Tribe Snail Games bans all the biggest ARC YouTubers when they weren't doing anything wrong and just raiding them, it would create a PR nightmare for Snail Games and all their products. There'd be videos of server admin abuse everywhere, it'd make the news, they would never be trusted again, and it'll affect their share price. That or T-Tribe will be forced not to cheat at all, as everyone will be recording it. And I'd have to fight normally and get wiped. Anyway, that's the latest scummyish action. What do you think of all this? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and for the couple of fanboys on Copium who thought I sound entitled because I highlighted that most people aren't happy for paying for a game they've already paid for and they don't want to lose thousands of hours, years of work to start a game, I can afford the upgrade. I'm not doing all this for me. I'm doing it for everyone else who can't afford it. And I don't care about losing my stuff because I'm not attached to it. And it's all on video anyway, so it'll live forever. I'm doing it for the poor players that are gutted that it'll lose everything. Who have put their hearts into what they've built and tamed. I think you're doing a bit of projection there. Because you're fine paying whatever it costs because you can afford it. And you don't care about starting again because you're not attached to anything. So screw everyone else. Wouldn't you say that's a bit selfish and entitled? With me, it's the players and viewers that come first, not the developers. So stop sucking up to them and making excuses for them. It's a complete disgrace that the Island Boys were banned. They only invited people they trust not to cheat. They videoed themselves making everything legit and fighting them fairly without any cheats because they knew they'd get falsely accused of cheating by T-Tribe, even when T-Tribe called in an external aimbotter to help them. And it's the Island Boys that got globally banned from official servers. And there's still been no comment from Wildcard about it. This isn't going away or being forgot about. Everyone, please help the Island Boys out. Any comment or post Snail Game or Wildcard does on Twitter, Steam, anything, ask them to restore the Island Boys accounts. Contact news influencers. And if enough of you do it, they might cover the story. Keep the pressure up and don't let Snail Games get away with this corruption. I'll post the videos of a raid from the Island Boys in the description below. Go check them out please and give them your support. Problems with a game is one thing, whether it's delays, a price, bugs, whatever. But when it comes to corruption and an unjust banning, that's a completely different level. And that creates an absolute disdain around your brand. It's indefensible and it will poison everything you're associated with. People will stop playing a game just on principle. So Wildcard, do yourself a favour and restore the island boys. Because all this is just so scummy. 
Ugh, the never ending bad news is a bit depressing. Thanks for watching everyone, hopefully we'll have good news one day. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, click the bell notifications and I'll see you again. And check out the Island Boy videos at the end. Goodbye.